Hi everyone and welcome back to Saturn Secrets. Today we're discussing the full supermoon in Capricorn happening on the 24th or 25th of June depending where you are and what it means for your zodiac sign. Everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the full supermoon in Capricorn, which is happening on the 24th of June for most of you, but also could be happening on the 25th for some of you. We're going to get into what this means for the individual zodiac signs, as well as the energy surrounding the full moon in general. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for regular moon astrology and tarot updates. So this supermoon is happening in the sign of Capricorn. Capricorn has become somewhat feared, I must say, after the last couple of years. 2020 was a very Capricorn dominated year. And so there is a little bit of a roll on effect from the Capricorn energy of 2020 with this full moon, particularly in terms of government, big corporations, big businesses, and your own possible career progression or your own potential career progression or how far you have come in your career. A lot of the time when there is a full moon in Capricorn, it exposes our subconscious energies, our subconscious beliefs or patterns surrounding our career, our reputation, our social status, and even for some people, the relationship with the father or authority. You often find that the two go hand in hand. So with the full moon in Capricorn happening, it's very likely that a lot of people are going to be feeling an awareness of what's going on within them because full moons are known to expose. And when we talk about the exposure of the full moons, a lot of people jump to the conclusion that it happens outside of ourselves, that it must be that we see what other people are doing or we see what events are happening around us that we maybe didn't notice before. And while this can be true, the moon is a very personal, point in our charts. And so when there's a full moon, it often exposes what we're actually feeling that we may not be aware of due to being busy, particularly with the Capricorn theme, what we're busy doing with our career and our goals at the expense of what's actually happening within us and makes us feel safe. When there is a Cancer Capricorn axis in play, it's very common that we realize how we feel in our career versus our home. There's usually a link up between what's going on at home and what's going on in our career. It's also the axis that depends very heavily on our past and how it's shaping our future. So as well as the sun and the full moon being opposite in the signs of Cancer and Capricorn, we also have Venus and Pluto on this axis too. So this is giving an impact to our money, our relationships and our power struggles in life. Now, when we have Capricorn energy, it's very common that we think of Saturnian themes because the full moon itself will be ruled by Saturn. Now Saturn is an Aquarius, but the energy of Saturn remains the same. Whenever there is a Saturnian aspect going on, whenever we're feeling the effects of Capricorn or we're feeling the effects of Saturn, we see very clearly in our lives where we feel restricted and where we maybe feel very cautious as well, where we don't have this natural optimism, that things could be working out for us, that things could be working in our favour. The concepts of pessimism are linked to Saturn because Saturn has with it a lot of fear. Now with being fearful, Saturn can either become wise or can become a tyrant as we saw with Cronus. With this particular full moon, you're being asked because of its link to Jupiter in Pisces and there being a really beautiful harmonious aspect, you're being asked to look at where you naturally lead with fear, with inhibition, with restriction, and where you could lead a little bit more or lean into the Jupiterian energy of optimism, hope, and faith. Because the full moon's most poignant aspect is its sextile with Jupiter, which is in Pisces. Now, Jupiter is retrograde in Pisces as from the 20th of June and will be retrograde in Pisces until the 20th of July. And then it will move back into Aquarius where it will actually join Saturn. Now, when we have a link up between Capricorn energy and Jupiter, it would be the same as when we have a link between Saturn and Jupiter as we did back in December. And while it's not going to manifest the same because they're in different signs, it's the same type of feeling where you can be a little bit more optimistic where you were restricted, where you were fearful. 
And if you look towards your own birth chart and look where you have Capricorn placements or look where Saturn is, what house it's in, what sign it's in, you can get a theme of where you're maybe a little bit self-restricted, there's limitations, there's a lack of trust. So for example, if you have Saturn in the 10th house, you may be a bit mistrusting of authority. If you've Saturn in the 11th house, you might be a bit mistrusting about friendships and groups. Saturn will show us where we are mistrusting and fearful. So the full moon in Capricorn in a similar notion will show us where we've become quite fearful. And a lot of the times, the reason that Capricorn and Saturn are so linked to career progression and success by the standard uh, corporate definition, I suppose, the monetary definitions, uh, Saturn achievements and success are very much linked to high status, high financial reward, that type of thing. The reason that they're linked to that is usually somewhat embedded in a fear of being unworthy, a fear of being inadequate or a fear of being in poverty even. So if you have a career goal in mind or you have something that would really make you feel like a success, it's time to inject a little bit more Jupiterian optimism into this and even play around a little bit with the idea of spirituality in terms of getting there. It's quite obvious at the moment that manifestation, visualization have become buzzwords. <laughs> They've become really popularized in the last uh, 10 years or so, very much linked to Neptune going through Pisces. And this is something that is a positive thing in terms of collective awareness, but not everybody practices it, not everybody understands it, or not everybody believes in it. But whatever case you may find resonates with you, if you find you have a career goal in mind or a reputation goal in mind, you want to be seen a certain way, you want to have a certain relationship with authority, you want to have a certain relationship with power, with status, because don't forget Venus and Pluto are opposed, pushing you to have some power and authority, particularly in your family, believe it or not. Um, you may find at this time that putting a bit more optimism into it could be something that really benefits you because Jupiter in Pisces is positively positively aspecting both the Capricorn and the Cancer energy. So Jupiter really is asking you and whatever power struggles you're going through and whatever fears you're possessing, whatever things are inhibiting you, to be a little bit more optimistic and also to choose wisdom over fear because Jupiter is inherently wise. And while Saturn can be inherently wise as well through the lessons, through the karma, Jupiter has a wisdom that everything is going to work out as it should. And Saturn may call that uh, naive, Saturn may call that uh, careless even. And there is going to be a big theme here with the loving, nurturing, playful, childlike voice of Cancer and the authoritarian dominant voice of Capricorn. There is a push and pull here between being childlike and in the moment and being uh, an adult, being serious. There's a push and pull going on here. And Jupiter in Pisces is saying that with Piscean energy, you can be fluid, you can be in a state of flow, you can be optimistic, you can be wise, you can have faith and you can tap into the universe, you can tap into your spiritual side. At Jupiter and Pisces is a beautiful time to be spiritual, to be religious, to be embodying this faith within yourself and your faith in the universe being strong with Jupiter and Pisces. And that type of faith, that type of wisdom, even if it might be somewhat different to the typical Capricorn wisdom that we see, which is learned through mistakes, this full moon is a time to really wash away your regrets, wash away your feelings of woe at where you are in life, what your status is, and embrace the feeling that you could achieve what it is that would feel like success to you. And this full moon has a beautiful way with Jupiter of exposing maybe what it is you need to do to get there. Now, Saturn is still squaring Uranus in the background. Saturn's the ruler of this full moon. And Saturn will also be trining the true node. And not a lot of people are talking about this. I noticed this happen back in April, now that Saturn's retrograded back to that point. This happened back in April around the time there was a lot of conversation surrounding uh, global travel opening up because the true node shows us the direction we're going and Saturn's very in tune with the global trend. So there could be some interesting news around this full moon in terms of what countries are maybe on the, I know there's a traffic light list of amber, red and green. There could be more news surrounding that. And um, 
this could be a theme going on in the background, especially because Uranus and Saturn at loggerheads is much to do with freedom versus restriction and where we feel physically free with Uranus being in Taurus and where we feel restricted socially. So there is a push and pull going on there too in the background, albeit it is somewhat waning ever so slightly. It will be a theme in the background for most of this year. It is quite a people versus restrictions, um, freedom of people versus you know corporations and things like that. The power struggle is quite strong around this full moon. But as I say, with Jupiter being the big benefic to this full moon and really being in harmony with most of the planets here, it is saying to you to choose optimism, to choose wisdom and to choose things like meditation, spirituality, if you have a deck of tarot cards, maybe dipping into those, or if you're religious, uh, finding a way to connect to the divine, but also if you don't believe in connecting to the divine, which would be quite strange if you were on this video, but if you don't, there could be a sense of connecting to your higher self, you when you're at your most powerful, you're at your most wise, you're at your most um, content with your place in the world, who you are and who you're choosing to be and where you're choosing to go. So I've been doing for all of these videos an animal spirit card to give a little bit of a, an esoteric theme for this full moon and see if there is a particular spirit totem, an animal spirit totem that can relate to this full moon and what's going on around this time. So let's see what we have. This is the animal spirit wild unknown deck by Kim Crowns if anyone's interested in it. And we will see what could be coming up for this full moon in general. What is the general energy for this full moon? Ah, huh. <laughs> controversial, the bat. <laughs> very controversial indeed. Well, the bat I think is quite an appropriate one. In fact, you can actually see in the background there is a full moon. So that's telling. Now, I'm not going to make this, uh, I'm not going to go into the obvious connotations of the bat that's going around in the news at the moment, but I'm going to go into the spiritual energies. It's just funny that we were talking about it being linked to 2020 and the bat is now such a controversial figure. But bats, are actually the only mammal, I believe, that can fly. I had to fact check the bat. It's true, the bat is the only winged mammal, the only mammal that's able to fly. And if you think about the full moon being in Capricorn and it having this exposure of our reputation, of our status, of where we want to go in life, who we want to be, we can think about the fact that maybe with the bat energy, there's something that makes you particularly unique and that is your unique selling point. It's something that can guarantee you success. Focusing on the things that you do well, thinking on the things that you are talented at, the gifts that you have, because everyone has something, right? And so a lot of the times with the Capricorn energy, we think about corporations and big business, we think a lot about competition, but we don't often focus on the fact that there is something about us that makes us special or unique, and it is a selling point, it is a quality that we possess that can be really very important in what it is that we want to pursue, you know, following our natural gifts, talents, and qualities instead of focusing on what everybody else has. Now, the bat is also an energy, because of this full moon in the background, an energy of letting go and of processing after the darkness. The fact that bats can see in the dark is very reminiscent of the full moon exposing what's going on in our subconscious, what we did not see before that goes on within us, what we're maybe not focusing on based on our perspectives. Now fear, it can be something that is incredibly limiting in terms of what we can see. Because when we're in a state of fear or a state of panic, we oftentimes focus then on the things that give us fear or reasons to fear feel fearful. And this is the human ego that's designed to keep us safe. It's not a bad thing, especially not in, a, in an actual scary situation. The difficulty is when we have fears that are internal and are sometimes unprocessed, which we can see with cancer season with the sun and going through cancer, we can see where the past is maybe holding us back ever so slightly and what we need to go backwards, look at, to nourish in order to flourish. That's a big theme with cancer and Capricorn. We nourish in order to flourish. So with this bat energy, this can be a big focus of letting go of the past, particularly the melancholy aspects of Capricorn, the regret, the remorse, the fear from the past, the fear of history repeating itself. If you lead from a place of wisdom, 
rather than fear, you can really grow and evolve. That's a big key with Capricorn energy, leading with the wisdom of the lessons learned rather than fear it will happen again. Because if you're leading with fear it'll happen again, you guarantee yourself it probably will because your body subconsciously will actually try and repeat situations you're afraid of so that you can master it. And this might be a waste of time because you just end up going through more of what you don't want instead of being reflective and being wise in terms of what you've already experienced. And while it may be a waste of time, it may not be a waste of time, I'm sure you would rather focus on the wisdom in the tough lessons rather than experience them again later. You know, you can master them with a full moon because the full moon exposes the subconscious and allows you to work through those energies to give them the nourishment and the childlike qualities of cancer and looking after yourself, parenting yourself in order for you to prosper in other areas and to go forth into the world fully grown. So that is the theme that we have for this full moon in Capricorn. I'm gonna go into the individual zodiac signs. What's your sun, moon and rising? and see which one resonates most for you. It's usually the rising resonates most in astrology, but I will be going into cards as well. So you can guarantee that there'll be something for your sun and rising and maybe even your moon, especially if you are a moon in Capricorn. This full super moon for the moon in Capricorn people will really be quite a cleansing and cathartic experience, one that can actually help you articulate some of the stuff you've been carrying for a while because Capricorn moon people can find it very hard to express their feelings and their emotions. And when there's a full super moon in your moon sign, it can be a time when the emotions come to the fore, particularly because the link to Jupiter and Pisces will open up Capricorn's third house. So I will see you in the Zodiac predictions and I'll talk to you soon. Have a beautiful full super moon in Capricorn. Hi Aries, welcome to your segment on the full moon in Capricorn. For you Aries, this is happening in your sector of reputation, of your boss energy, of career, of long-term professional success and your sense of authority or your relationship with authority. Now it's going to be opposing the sun in Cancer. We have the Venus-Pluto opposition happening in this axis as well, meaning that this month, Aries, it's important around this full moon in particular to spend time with family and what makes you feel safe, what makes you feel emotionally secure. And spending time in the home or with the family is something that will be really beneficial to you at this time. But career will be quite busy. It's very likely that work will be busy, that your relationship with authority, with your boss will become heightened in some capacity. For some of you with a super full moon, it could be that a boss figure is stepping down or leaving. You could be asked to step up, somebody in the workplace that is in authority or someone that seems to be part of the furniture as it will could be stepping away and you could have to take on more of a leadership role or you could be asking around this time for more independence for more work. For some of you, this could be uh, a time that you get a new job, that some career application is successful. But your career is what was really in the spotlight at this time, Aries, and it's likely dominating your time quite a bit, especially with Pluto being there. There could be some power struggles going on, I do have to say, so it's important that you feel confident, that you feel secure, and the best way to do this is by getting your home life in order, by making sure that everything is where you need it to be, that you feel safe in terms of your uh, home life, you feel secure, you have time on your own, you have time at home, and also make sure you're not carrying the past too far into the future, because this full moon is asking you to let go of some past patterns that are maybe making you play it safe in terms of career goals or you're just feeling a creature of habit in career. This is a film that exposes a bit more of an oomph, a bit more of a desire to have some aspiration or goal met. Okay, so that's what's happening for you, Aries. Your cards were really interesting. You have the magician and the contract card, meaning that you are likely manifesting some kind of balance in your life. You're likely needing to balance your career and your family home. Uh, there could be some kind of link between your family and your professional life. Maybe it's a family business. Maybe it is working with someone in your family. Maybe it is news about your family's career in some sense or capacity. There could be news surrounding the father. But for a lot of you with the magician and the contract card, you're likely going to be manifesting opportunities, manifesting business opportunities. Some of you could also be committing to relationships significantly that affects your status. That could be getting married, for example. You could be getting married around this full moon. You could be maybe getting engaged around this full moon, something that's going to change your overall status. Uh, that's very likely if you're a female. 
uh, there's going to be something that means that professionally or in terms of your reputation with the world, your status is changing in some way. This is a super moon. So it's likely that if your status isn't changing, you're beginning a process of that. So some of you could be signing legal papers. Some of you could be uh, getting documentation. Some of you could be updating your passport, for example. And some of you could just be manifesting something very secure for yourself, something that is going to have long-term meaning and potentially legalities linked to it. So that could be something professional. It could be something personal. But with the Magician card, Aries, <laughs> You know, you have the energy here to really make something of yourself in terms of your career and your status, if that's where you're interested. But if you are interested in just obtaining some kind of different reputation, that's fine too. It's whatever success means to you. The 10th house should not tell you what success is. It's how you define it. And with the magician, just remember that whatever contract you're going for or whatever uh, next step you want to move into, you have all the tools that you need. With the full moon being here, you could be wrapped up some kind of professional chapter or even uh, graduating because you're moving into a graduate status rather than someone who is actually studying. Something like that. You're equipped with some very interesting tools going forward Aries so shoot for the stars and I'll talk to you soon. Bye! Hi Taurus, welcome to your prediction for the full moon in Capricorn. This is happening in your ninth house of wisdom, philosophy, travel, adventure. And it's going to be opposing the sun in Cancer, which is your third house of communication and your neighborhood. So it's very likely at this time, Taurus, you're feeling a polarity between this need to stay local and to travel. This need to stick to your regular confined beliefs and explore outward into different territory. There is an expansiveness with this full moon, but it's likely that this expansiveness, thanks to the opposition between Venus, your ruler, and Pluto, could actually be something that's quite scary, but transformation isn't meant to feel safe all the time, Taurus. There is a personal philosophy changing for you around this time. The way that you choose your belief system, the way that you choose to travel, the way you choose to expand your mind, the way you choose to feel alive even, the way you choose to feel the sense of adventure, and to be someone who is knowledgeable. There's been a lot of focus over the last year for you, Taurus, particularly in terms of learning new skills, of studying, of career advancement. And this full moon is asking you, what's the most important thing that you've learned and how can you take it into the next chapter? Um, what is your mindset is the most important question around this full moon Taurus, because it's likely thanks to the full moon, especially being a super moon, you're going to feel an awareness of what it is that you truly believe and what it is that you truly subscribe to, where you put your hat as it will, uh, what hill that you choose to die on. I always find that expression kind of funny, I don't know why. But your belief systems are key around this time. And there is a sense of adventure that is both scary and full of possibilities for you. Whatever it is that this horizon that's showing up for you at this time is, because it's likely that there is a new adventure on the horizon for you, Taurus. You just have to figure out how it is that you choose to engage with it. Is it through optimism or is it through fear? Now this could be linked to your money, it could be linked to your career, because your cards were the Blossoming Abundance card and the page of pentacles. This gives me that small acorns quote, where from small acorns mighty oak trees grow. So for a lot of you that could be in an apprenticeship stage, because the ninth house is linked to university, it's linked to graduation, you could be in an apprenticeship stage, you could be in a training contract of some capacity, you could have just started out in a particular field. Uh, for some of you, this could just be a new adventure in life you've not experienced before, and it could be in the new beginning stage. Uh, some area of your life is feeling like a new beginning and you can look to where uh, these new beginnings are happening in your chart, maybe linked back to the eclipses, especially the solar eclipse, Gemini. The new beginning for you, Taurus, could really be in terms of your money, which is clear with the Page of Pentacles and the Abundance card. There are going to be long-term benefits from whatever it is that you're in a beginner stage in, what it is that makes you feel abundant, what it is that makes you feel secure, and make, taking baby steps towards them. You know, with the adventure energy of the ninth house, not everything has to be a huge buy a one-way ticket and just move across the world. It doesn't have to be that, especially now. It's not really the most feasible thing for a lot of people. But it is where you choose to invest in small amounts towards something long-term. And as an earth sign, you're pretty good at that. So you're focusing around this full moon about where you want your current paths to lead you. 
the path that you're going down, what you feel about it, where you feel it's going to go, do you feel it's going to be prosperous? If you don't feel like it's going to be prosperous, it's likely around this full moon. And that doesn't have to be in terms of money, it can be in terms of fulfillment. If you don't feel it's going to be prosperous, it's very likely, Taurus, that you could be making a decision to change paths or to take on something else. So that's what I have for you, Taurus, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Gemini, welcome to your Full Moon and Capricorn prediction segment. So Gemini, this Full Moon is happening in your 8th house of shared resources. It's a very deep, intimate, committed house. It's very likely around this time that you could be considering whether or not you want to invest in something financially. Maybe somebody wants to invest in you financially, maybe emotionally, maybe intimately. Where you're investing your time, your money, your feelings and your efforts is coming to fruition around this time. So perhaps you're being paid for something you have done in collaboration with somebody else perhaps there is a new collaboration coming up for you at this time perhaps there's a collaboration coming back around but something where you can really feel connected to another person either financially in terms of work uh, in terms of services in terms of your own personal talents which is what happens with the eighth house or in terms of your intimate life for some of you this could be um wrapping up something within a marriage, wrapping something up within a relationship. Your ideas of commitment are coming into question around this time and how you feel about it. And what you need to do in order to transform the alliances that you choose, the commitments that you've chosen, or whether you want to solidify them, whether you want to make them official. So these are quite big questions coming up around this full moon, Gemini, particularly because we have this opposition going on between Venus and Pluto. Now Venus is in your sector of money, of income, and it is opposite Pluto in your shared resources. So you're figuring out how you link to somebody in terms of money and how you link to somebody in terms of security and stability. And these questions are maybe something that's making you quite anxious because we did have the anxious card and the three of wands, meaning that you are feeling a little bit like there's a lot on the table around this time. You're maybe feeling like there's a lot of pressure to commit to something or you're running out of time or you may feel like you're not where you wanted to be in terms of your commitments. But with the full moon in Capricorn, especially because of its link to Jupiter being in Pisces, for you in particular, there is a likelihood of positive transformation in terms of career, in terms of status, in terms of recognition, in terms of uh, success. All these things are likely to benefit you in the long run. And there's probably with the three of wands, good things coming on the horizon. And this might require <laughs> a bit of consideration in terms of your commitments, but that's okay. We have had a lot of energy in your particular sign, meaning that the dust is still settling in terms of who you are. So if you need to take a few days to think about your big decisions and what is coming in for you, that is okay too, Gemini. But just know that commitments around this time are to be taken seriously, but they could also be incredibly beneficial for you in the long run. So that's what I have for you, Gemini, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Cancer, welcome to the Full Moon segment prediction for your sign. Happy birthday to all the Cancers born in June or whenever it is that you're watching this. So Cancer, this Full Moon is happening in your seventh house of agreements, of partnerships, of harmony, of peace. And this full moon is going to be highlighting these areas in particular for you. It could be that around this time a relationship becomes official. It could be at this time that a relationship is moving into the next phase, the next level. It could be that you're setting up some kind of boundaries in a relationship or there's going to be significant conversations in a relationship. It's also likely with the sextile between this full moon and Jupiter in Pisces, which is very linked for you to your higher wisdom, your personal philosophies, that being more optimistic, being more uh, open-minded, being more wise and being more adventurous is something that's also going to benefit your relationship. So you could be traveling with a partner. And this is something that could be coming up for you in the future because we had the sun card. Now this is fantastic because the sun brings this warmth, this energy, the sun is what rules the summer solstice which happens when the sun goes into cancer. The sun is obviously in your sign. So there's a lot of blessings coming for you around this full moon in terms of relationships, happiness, joy, fulfillment. But if you're not feeling that quite yet and you, it's because you have to make an important decision, um, be patient with yourself and don't rush it because we have the patience card and adjacent possibilities. When we have you know, this opposition between Venus in your sign and Pluto in your partnerships and your contracts. Don't rush anything. There's a bit of a power struggle at the moment. People might be trying to push you in terms of making a decision or they might be trying to sell a decision to you based entirely on their own 
benefit as it were. So don't rush anything in terms of commitments. If you're feeling a little bit unsure, your intuition's very on point over the next month with the sun being in your sign. You're a very intuitive sign. Don't rush anything. The link to Jupiter and Pisces meaning for you that trusting your intuition, trusting optimism and wisdom will serve you. But also if you're feeling a little bit like, I just wanna take my time with this decision, do that. Um, but you do have uh, more good stuff to come as well with the sun card and the patience. Uh, some things take time to grow. So in terms of relationships, it might be that it's taken a long time to get to this point, or you're finally seeing some sort of benefits, you're finally seeing some sort of growth that you wanted in your relationship life. This could be true if you're single around the full moon, you could be meeting somebody. It's likely that if you do meet someone around this time, especially because Venus is in your sign, it, because of its opposition to Pluto, they, there might be a little bit of a power struggle there might be some games being played. It's also likely that this could be somebody who is from a different neck of the woods to you, a different country, they speak a different language, they have a different uh, philosophy, or as I say, you could just be traveling to meet somebody or in a long distance relationship around this time where there is a significant culmination of events. But nevertheless, when the sun comes up as a tarot card cancer, I have to say this is beautiful. And this full moon in particular is very blessed. So for it to fall in your partnership zone is indeed something quite wonderful. So that is what I have for you, Cancer, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Leo, welcome to your full moon in Capricorn predictions for your zodiac sign. Leo, this is happening in your sixth house of health and habit. So around this full moon, it's very likely that you're planning on giving up something kind of toxic. You're kind of planning to change your diet, change your routine, your exercise routine. Maybe you're exercising more. Maybe you're falling in love with fitness. You're falling in love with a particularly new way of eating, a new way of exercising, meditating. How you look after your body is really coming to the fore at this time. And the way this is going to manifest for you, Leo, it's likely that your body is going to tell you what it needs. It's gonna tell you, I need more sleep. It's not gonna literally speak to you, obviously, but you can, if you can really tune in during a meditation, if you just lie silently for a few moments and listen to your body and where it's feeling some tension or some discord. You could also look at the emotional codes on YouTube. I believe there is a man who has a video on how to tune into the emotional, um, the physical feelings in your body and how they equate to your emotional system, the way they equate to your emotions that can be trapped in the body. You might take up Reiki at this time. That's something that could be really beneficial to you. Uh, the sixth house is really asking you how to have a more healthy environment for yourself, particularly in terms of work. You may find yourself around this time having to assert a boundary in terms of work, Leo. We have the King of Swords here. So maybe you need to say no to something, even though you could be on a roll, work could be very busy, there could be a lot of opportunities. You may have to say no <laughs> to keep your health in check and to keep yourself well. Uh, taking on a healthier lifestyle, especially in terms of you know your shared resources, because we do have Jupiter connecting to this full moon and Jupiter is in your eighth house of your talents, of your shared resources financially and intimately. It's it's very likely around this time that some of you as well need to let go of some anger. This can be very beneficial to you when Jupiter's going through the eighth house. It can help you see the past in a way that makes you feel like you have transformed or grown or you're proud of yourself for how you've handled something. With the Five of Cups and the Hostilities card, you may need to find a way of making peace with the past or just letting go of it ever so slightly or just changing the way you feel about it or working through it in some capacity in order for yourself to feel better, particularly mentally, emotionally and physically. Because with the hostilities card, any tension that's coming up for you around this time, Leo, could for sure be linked to work, but it could also be linked to the past here. You know, we have the sun in your 12th house and we have Venus in your 12th house and both are opposing your health and well-being sectors. Meaning that some of you may not have let go of a confrontation from the past. Some of you might still be very angry at somebody. And there is that quote, and I can't quite tell who said it. Uh, anger is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. How you're poisoning yourself with angers and resentments from the past might be something that you wanna let go of around this time because it could be affecting your body. So with the King of Swords, asserting boundaries with yourself as well as important, making time to exercise, to eat right, to say no to too many work projects if there's things going on that are just draining you and draining your resources. 
It's very important to look after yourself. Mind, body and soul are your focus around this full moon and it's very likely your body is going to talk to you and if you're pushing yourself too hard, you're going to come down with a cold or a flu or something that doesn't make you feel good at all so that you can get some rest. So make sure you're getting some rest, Leo. Um, and if you're focusing on fitness or well-being or your health, that is a beautiful thing and it work out really well for you in the long term. So that's what I have for you, Leo, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Virgo, welcome to your full moon in Capricorn prediction for your zodiac sign. So Virgo, the sun in Cancer is going to be in your 11th house of groups, of networking and of wishes and it's going to be opposing the full supermoon in Capricorn in your 5th house of romance, pleasure, happiness and joy. So around this full moon, Capricorn, Virgo. <laughs> nearly called you Capricorn, interesting. Virgo, the full moon is asking you to really figure out what makes you happy. And sometimes that can take time to figure out. It's not always easy for us because, especially for earth signs, I think, because you can sometimes get very bogged down in the practicalities of the, um, the rules you have to follow, of the things you need to check off, of the, the practicalities, the things that you must do that can be quite tedious. Sometimes you can get very unfocused and what actually gives you joy and what actually makes you happy. Around this full moon, it's a beautiful time to take up a hobby, a practice, something that makes you feel joy, makes you feel excited, something that you feel okay not being a perfectionist at. Maybe you're going to try a particular hobby like um, dancing or singing or writing poetry, something that makes your heart sing, something that makes you feel excited, something that makes you feel creative. We do have for you the Eight of Pentacles. So for some of you, this could be taking up a hobby that is painting or art or creating or knitting or sewing or something, creating a book, creating a comic, creating a, a painting, just something that lets you flow, something that lets your energies come out in a way that makes you feel creative and makes you feel passionate, that makes you feel just happy in the moment. It doesn't have to be professionally aesthetic. It doesn't have to go on your Instagram. It doesn't have to generate you a following, all these different types of things. Although it's very likely, <laughs> very likely that it could because we do have the sun in Cancer lighting up your 11th house of social networking and friendships. We had the community card come out for you, Virgo, which I love because this is saying that you need to spend time with your friends, even if you feel a little bit like there's a push and pull between your friends creatively. It's more a time for doing, I guess, solo projects in terms of creativity because you might not be in the same wavelength as your friends. Your friends could make you feel like the things that you're doing creatively aren't going to work, so maybe just do them in private. But if you can collaborate with people on a project, this could actually be something quite beneficial to you, provided there's no power struggles, I guess. You know, uh, In terms of team building, it is actually possible there could be some power struggles in terms of a creative project or in terms of a social event or something fun, something exciting. Maybe your friends aren't on the same wavelength as you in terms of what's fun at the moment. So. You might find yourself meeting new friends, especially in July, that are actually a little bit more on your level in terms of what makes you happy. For some of you, there is something going on with a fire sign in Aries, Leo Sagittarius. This could be a friendship of yours. You could be meeting someone who's going to be a really good friend to you, someone who's really exciting, someone who really has the same joy as you. But for a lot of you, the King of Wands symbolizes following your heart. Um, following a path that makes you happy, choosing something that gives you joy, choosing something that makes you feel energetic. For a lot of you, this could be sport with the King of Wands going on here. It could be something, especially because this full moon is ruled by Saturn and it's in your sixth house of health and well-being and your physical body. So some of you could be finding an exercise that allows you to be creative or some of you could be choosing music or fashion, just something that's exciting, get playful. You're more creative around the full moon uh, in your fifth house, Virgo. So enjoy yourself, make pleasure your priority and don't listen, if there's some uh, friendship naysayers, if you find yourself around people that don't applaud when you're winning, just maybe keep it to yourself, maybe distance yourself from that energy. So it's a season where you could really find out who your true friends are in terms of being on your wavelength as well, Virgo. Uh, but don't let the power struggle stop you from networking because it's likely there's going to be a lot of helpful people at this time too. Okay, so that is what I have for you, Virgo. I hope you have a beautiful full moon and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. 
Hi Libra, welcome to your predictions for the full moon in Capricorn. This is happening in your fourth house of home, family and your living situation. Now this is a super full moon, so it's likely around this time that you could be finding that there is some um, information comes to light within you about your emotional foundations, what makes you feel secure, your home, your family, uh, ancestral karma. It could be that your family relationships are coming into the a uh, spotlight for some reason at this time. So it could be that some of you are moving, some of you are relocating, some of you could be uh, experiencing some news about the family, some of you could be hearing some news in terms of your family and in terms of your career. It's actually quite interesting that this full moon is going to be, uh, if we're just, a, I can think of a rising in Libra when we think of the connection between family and career, this actually full moon is going, this full moon is actually going to impact Britney Spears, who is in a a legal battle, I believe, between her father and it's to do with her family and career. So it's not that you're going to be going through the same thing, but it's just that these themes for you, Libra, are going to be coming up, uh, especially if you're a Libra rising, as is her case. So for some of you, you could be figuring out around this time what roots you have been putting down for yourself and you're really realizing where you have become stuck or where you've become stagnant in terms of your home or maybe even in terms of your career, where there's a push and pull between the two. Because one of the things I'm seeing for you, Libra, with the all tied up card is that a lot of you need to figure out if where you're putting roots is good for yourself. Maybe you have decided that you want to, you no longer want to live in the city. Maybe some of you decided that you no longer want to live with your housemates. Some of you have decided that you feel a little bit stuck where you are in terms of a living situation or some of you have been tied up in renovations and things like that and the full moon is giving you some sort of release. Um, some sort of new path is coming to you because we have the Ace of Cups card here, meaning that there are things going on in your life, Libra, that can feel incredibly sensitive. You can feel quite pushed to express yourself emotionally. You could be having healing conversations with your family, with your housemates, with people that you're connected to through blood, people that you feel uh, there needs to be some kind of healing going on. For a lot of you with the Venus in your... Uh, 10th house, Pluto being in your 4th house, there is going to be a lot of transformations and power struggles going on between your home and family dynamics. Uh, what would make you feel settled? What would make you feel emotionally good? Focus on that around this time and don't be afraid of expressing your feelings. It's very likely that there could be expressions around this time and I have to say as well, your relationship dynamics are in focus at the moment. With the Ace of Cups, it could be that a lot of you are finally expressing how you feel or somebody else is expressing how you feel. This one could be quite emotional for you, I have to say. So just make sure that with the film and being in your fourth house, you're taking good self-care, you're making yourself feel emotionally free. Um, emotional freedom techniques, you know, tapping, follow videos like that on YouTube to allow the emotions to process so that they don't get trapped in your body and stored unnecessarily. You could even try uh, EM MDR or something to work through an event, especially if it has impacted you in terms of your family or your career. Maybe some of you could have actually been in the past traumatized by a negative or toxic boss or even a toxic family dynamic that has made you feel uh, trapped trauma that could come up around this full moon. So if you're feeling any of those things, just make sure that you have a way of processing the feelings. It could be quite emotional, I have to say. So make sure that your home is feeling secure. Maybe get yourself some new pillows, some fresh flowers, something to just make you feel very uh, content with your home space. You could actually find some really beautiful uh, pieces to add to your home that might make you feel very content. That is what I have for you, Libra. I hope you have a beautiful full moon and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Scorpio, welcome to your predictions for the full moon in Capricorn. So Scorpio, this full moon is happening in your third house of communication and your neighborhood and your siblings. So for some of you, you could be changing up your neighborhood around this time. Some of you could be getting news with your siblings. A lot of you could be having a very important conversation around this time. Now the sun is in Cancer, Venus is in Cancer. This could be linked to travel, this could be linked to um, foreign affairs, foreign travel, it could be linked to philosophy, you could be opening your mind around this time and you could be realizing that you have set yourself with this full moon happening in your third, some preconceptions that are no longer helpful to your future Scorpio, preconceptions that have been making you feel kind of uh, indecisive in terms of what it is that you want to do. For a lot of Scorpios you could be receiving news at this time, having a conversation that brings a lot of clarity and because of its beautiful link to Venus this could have a beautiful benefit to your romantic life. This could be that you start um, 
having conversations about the future with the person you're dating. You could be finding yourself, even if it's not romantic, being more creative, being more artistic, because Jupiter is in your fifth house of romance, happiness, pleasure. So it's likely there could be a really beautiful conversation happening for you around this time, Scorpio, that makes you feel quite excited, that makes you feel quite um, adventurous as well. And also with this full moon happening and aspecting your ninth house, you could be finding yourself with Pluto being in Capricorn, also your third house, you're getting some new mentors at this time. People are going to want to help you, lead you, advise you. It's likely around this time, Scorpio, you could be getting some good news and your cards were quite indicative of that. So we had the indecision card come up. So this represents that maybe over the last six months you've been kind of unsure about the direction you're going you've been kind of unsure about the path you're taking you're kind of unsure about the future this full moon brings you news that could give you some kind of clarity if you've been feeling quite concerned about where something's going this full moon is going to give you an indication of that and it's likely going to lead you into something quite committed it could be news of a contract um, a relationship could be going official you could be figuring out the next stages in a relationship uh, a contract situation is very likely coming up for you at this time and it feels quite positive for you, Scorpio, because we have the Two of Wands, Ace of Pentacles, and the Knight of Cups. So if some of you are beginning, maybe around this time, a new relationship that's going to be quite committed for you. Maybe um, you have Venus in Libra and Saturn in Aquarius is trining it at this time because uh, if you have Venus in an air sign, it's receiving... Um, the only air sign I think Scorpio can have is a Venus is Libra. So if you're a Scorpio with a Venus in Libra, it could be meeting by Saturn. Uh, Saturn could also be touching your Jupiter or your moon or something like this in a harmonious way that's bringing you committed relationships. With the contract card, the Ace of Pentacles and the Knight of Cups, some of you could be getting married around this time. Um, some of you could be, I suppose that could be engagement as well. Some of you could be actually going down a new path with a partner, moving with a partner or just traveling with a partner at this time. It could also be that you are going to begin a new job, Scorpio, because the third house of communications and the contract could be news of a new job or a contract that you need to sign. Some of you could also be going with the ninth house on a vacation that is going to be very romantic for you. So you might meet somebody on a vacation or via traveling actually, Scorpio. Um, but one thing that I think you need to know with the indecision card and the contract card is that your indecision on a situation is going to become clear, but also looking back on whatever the indecision has been, it is entirely possible that the indecisiveness could have been due to bad timing. It might not have been something that was meant to happen at that point. Maybe you weren't ready because the Ace of Pentacles is typically a brand new seed. So there is something being sown for you in terms of your future Scorpio that you feel very emotionally contempt with based on the Knight of Cups or romance with Jupiter in the fifth house is taking uh, a beautiful turn at this time because it's likely going to be lighting up your sector of true love and pleasure and happiness. And with the Ace of Pentacles and the Two of Wands, this is setting up for you a very exciting path that has likely got some longevity to it with the contract and the Ace of Pentacles. So as usual, Scorpio, you have the most cards come out, but they are actually really exciting for you. And with the third house being a super moon, I do feel that the news that you get at this time, uh, the communication that you get at this time is likely to be quite exciting, especially with that uh, Jupiter and Pisces aspect. Now, the only twist here is that your ruler Pluto is opposing Venus, meaning that you might be more possessive, you might be more jealous in terms of your uh, conversations, you might express that you're jealous, you might be jealous of um, you know, somebody, maybe a partner traveling or maybe a partner being really excited about something in their life, you could have a little bit of jealousy coming up there with Venus and Pluto clashing. So just do watch for that. <laughs> do watch for that. You know yourself, you're a Scorpio. Um, so that's what I have for you, Scorpio. Uh, and I will talk to you soon. Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your predictions for the full moon, super moon in Capricorn and what it means for your zodiac sign. Sagittarius, know your worth. This full moon is happening in your second house of value, confidence, your assets, and it's going to be opposing the sun in your shared resources, in your hidden talents, in your psychological breakthroughs. And we still have an opposition going on at that time of Venus and Pluto that are in those houses as well. So there's a bit of a power struggle going on here between where you want to invest your time and who you want to invest your money, your time, your emotions, your resources with. <laughs> At the same time, this film is going to be in a beautiful sextile with your ruler Jupiter in your fourth house of home, family, and emotional security. 
So Sagittarius, around this time, it's likely that you are going to be creating and investing in something with somebody else. This could be a relationship where you're investing emotionally or financially. It could be a project with a friend, something you're doing one-on-one -on -one with somebody else. It's likely a one-on-one -on -one rather than group dynamic, but you are creating something with somebody else. You're investing in something with someone else. It could be material, physical. You're creating a, a, a space with somebody else. You're putting your time and your energy into something that is shared and you're also figuring out in terms of money what it is makes you feel makes you feel secure what it is that makes you feel appreciated and valued and around this full moon it's also okay to say to a family member um, or a child or a roommate or something like this if you're not feeling the investment if you feel like they're not spending enough time with you you know it's uh, you could be feeling a little bit neglected if by someone in your family and if that's the case you should speak up on it because this full moon is encouraging you Sagittarius to know your worth and that your time and your energy and your resources are precious and you want to make sure with that Venus Pluto opposition that they're being appreciated that is something that you need to draw a boundary with to make sure because we have the five of pentacles here so if you're feeling like someone's leaving you out in the cold you're well within your remit to express that feeling saying hey you're not spending enough time with me um you're not emotionally here maybe you're on your phone all the time or something like this or you know I'm investing so much in this project that we're doing together and you're not pulling your weight that sort of thing or maybe financially someone's not paying you back money wise and this woman could bring these things to a head it is important that you remain <laughs> though Sagittarius excited about the, f the future and future investments we have the thinking man and the three of wands here meaning that there's likely going to be some opportunities on the horizon for you um there could be a lot of people with the Cancerian season, especially with Venus being there, wanting to invest in you, wanting to use your talents and your abilities, maybe in work. And it's up to you what you do with these, but just make sure that you're leading with a sense of self-worth, self-confidence. People could be really intrigued by what it is that you're doing, creating. You could have discovered a new talent recently that you're going to invest time and money in. And people are really interested in what it is that you're doing. For some of you, there could also be Sagittarius, um, with a new relationship on the horizon with the thinking man especially if you're interested in men there could be somebody coming in for you that's really intellectually interesting someone who's really smart someone who is witty someone who is good banter and someone who's going to help you expand your horizon someone who wants to do adventurous things go on exciting trips and it could also be that you're just very much thinking about what it is you want to do next in your life, your next adventures, uh, what you want from your unions, what it is you want from your... Um, the, the talents that you're becoming very much aware of at this time, Sagittarius. So there's, new, there's new talents coming to the fore that you're going to nurture at this time. Kind of like tending to your garden where you have to water the seeds and nurture them and attend uh, to the soil. I think you have some new talents that could be coming to the fore that are actually going to be quite exciting for you in the future and could lead to some interesting opportunities, Sagittarius. So that's what I have for you. I hope you have a beautiful full moon and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Capricorn and welcome to your predictions for the full supermoon in your sign. So Capricorn, this full moon is all about you, who you're becoming, who you're choosing to be, how you're choosing to express yourself. This is the time when you might be finding yourself leaning into a new style because it's a supermoon you might be finding uh, styles, looks that make you feel more authentic, you could be changing up your appearance in some way, you could be leaning into a new way of living, you could be finding yourself in the spotlight at this time, all eyes are going to be on you. And it's likely that you're feeling very thoughtful about these uh, opening up energies, it's likely that being in the spotlight is making you feel quite thoughtful, you're very recognised in your social circle thanks to the sextile to Jupiter in your third house of communication, it's likely that there's going to be a lot of interesting conversations at this time, a lot of open dialogue and a, a need to express yourself verbally as well, you could be finding yourself speaking your mind with ease, you could be finding yourself unblocking your throat chakra, um, wearing more blue, uh, holding lapis lazuli, anything that can really open up your ability to communicate and be your authentic self. Choose to express yourself in a way that feels more like you because we actually had, believe it or not, the devil card come up for you um, and this is your astrological association because this is Saturn. So when the devil comes up and it links to Capricorn and links to Saturn, this is where you're choosing to release yourself from your inhibitions. Some of you could be finding that you're no longer content with the, the contracts and the partnerships that you have if they're feeling very controlling and very restrictive because of the Venus-Pluto opposition, Venus is in your partnership sector 
and Pluto is in your sign, meaning that you may feel powerful enough to walk away with the chariot card from anything that doesn't serve you professionally potentially even romantically but I feel more so with Venus and the Sun being in your partnership sector a lot of you are going to be feeling a lot of passion and a lot of love in your partnerships there could be a little bit of a power struggle in some dynamics maybe even some jealousy in others but for the most part this could be something that actually feels very passionate and very dazzling for some of you because Venus in your partnership sector is very benefic okay and because it's opposing Pluto this could bring a lot of heat it could actually bring a lot more commitment as well to your partnerships because your partnership axis is activated around this time. So for some of you, you're going to be committing deeper to what it is that you have in a relationship. And some of you are going to be leaving behind things that aren't working for you professionally or romantically. With the Page of Swords and the Healer of Ages, your words have a lot of power around this time. You can really be a source of healing to others. You can be a source of leadership to others. Professionally, people might be looking up to you more. You might be getting some really interesting news. If you're doing, for example, um, if you've applied for something or you're looking for feedback on something and for some of you as well you could also be with the page of swords and the healer of the ages you could get some really interesting information if you do recce or you go to psychics or you go to tarot readers or you go to mediums or something like this a lot of you could be getting some really interesting messages and you could also be getting uh messages from the beyond in some capacity with the healer of the ages card and the page of swords because jupiter in the third house is communication now I, <laughs> it's not to say because it's going to be forming a square with your 12th house so it is likely that around this time you could have some sort of communication um wouldn't recommend doing a ouija board i have to say if you're feeling like dappling in that because you're getting like the confidence to you wouldn't recommend it I don't think many Capricorns would recommend it either. Um, but your intuition is heightened because this full moon is in your sign. So you could really be feeling very connected to the universe and really powerful as well, especially if you are a Capricorn rising. You could be stepping into a new identity and people could be thinking, wow, who's that? They've changed, you know what I mean? Because Pluto is there in your sign opposing Venus and um, asking you to really change up your aesthetics and the way you do business and the way you interact with money and the way you interact with love and different things like that. And it's all about stepping into your own power and being powerful where you once felt very restricted. So that's what I have for you, Capricorn. I hope you have a beautiful full moon and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Aquarius, welcome to your predictions for the full moon, super moon in Capricorn. Aquarius, this is happening in your 12th house. 12th house is all to do with retreat and resting. This is where you tend to yourself behind the scenes, you nurture your spirit, you nurture your soul, you remove yourself a little bit from the everyday grind as it were because the 12th house is very much based in solitude it's based on looking inward and when there's a full moon especially when it's a super moon this can be quite intense you could be really incredibly psychic around this time you could be having very lucid dreams you could be feeling very aware of what's going on in your subconscious and how it's impacting your work how it's impacting your body and how it's impacting your well-being um because there's so much going on in the sixth house with the sun being there and Venus being there and it being in opposition to your 12th house, you really have to focus on where you need to transform your inner world, Aquarius. With Pluto being there in the conversation, your inner world is affecting your work and your well-being. So you may notice that there's a bit of a power struggle with you in terms of maybe being a workaholic or putting too much energy into a project or a workout or something like this that is detrimental to your inner sense of self and your inner sense of peace. This is a beautiful full moon for any kind of recce healing, therapy, um, divination, tarot work, astrology work. This is also a time of endings and beginnings. So one of the cards that came up for you though um, was the Fool, which is the new beginning, but it's number zero. So it's starting from the ground up. For a lot of you with the Queen of Pentacles and the woman holding a coin, there's going to be a new beginning in terms of how you work that is linked to this 12th house full moon of closure and ending. So you're healing something within you. Venus is in your sixth house, meaning that you really want to invest uh, in your work life, in your body, in your physical health, in your well-being. But because of Pluto being in your 12th house, you may need some kind of transformation there. You may need some type of... Um, you need to take back your power in terms of your subconscious because it could really be ruling you at this time. You need to make sure that it is not changing you in a way that you don't like. You make sure that it's not leading you through fear, basically. 
because Saturn is in your sign and Saturn is at the moment in a square with Uranus in Taurus, which is to do with your past. So we have this energy going on Aquarius where the more you commit around this full moon to healing some inner issues and see maybe where you're leading from fear, maybe where you're leading from a restricted point of view, this could be impacting your physical health, it could be impacting your money, it could be impacting your well-being. Now, the full moon itself, as I say, is going to be in Capricorn. Um, I was just mentioning the way it's impacting your money. It's going to be sextiling Jupiter in your second house of money, income, worth. So it's very likely that the more inner work you do around this time, Aquarius, if you're journaling, if you're doing therapy, if you're working around this full moon in your inner world, it's going to positively impact your career, your money, your success financially, especially with the queen of pentacles and the woman holding a coin. It's very likely that with this full moon, the closure, the inner healing is going to link to some sort of new beginning in terms of your money, in terms of work, in terms of financial abundance. So just bear in mind that if you are working through some trickier emotions, Aquarius, it is going to benefit you in the long term, especially in terms of building more solid foundations for yourself. Um, you could also be dealing with a Taurus, Virgo or Capricorn around this time that is in some way linked to your new beginning, particularly if you're interested in someone who is female and is an earth sign. There could be some kind of new beginning going on there for you, Aquarius, that could be quite interesting. Um, this could also be a professional alliance, but that is what I have for you, Aquarius, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Pisces, welcome to this full moon in Capricorn prediction segment for your sign. So Pisces, this full super moon in Capricorn is happening in your 11th house of manifestation, of wishes, of friendships, of social connections. And it is going to be sextiling Jupiter in your first house. Meaning that this full moon is a little bit of a wish fulfillment moment for you, believe it or not, Pisces. Because with the full moon being in your sector of wishes, sometimes a goal can manifest. Um, sometimes you can get some recognition, especially in terms of social media, in terms of fame, uh, in your friendship groups, recognition. You could feel very seen and supported around this time by your friendships and by your audience, as it were. It's also kind of possible at this time, because it's a full supermoon in your friendship sector, it could expose friendships that you're not aligned with anymore, or people that maybe aren't in your corner as much as you'd hoped, or maybe people that have been in some capacity not there for you when you needed them. So that is something that could be happening for you around this time too, Pisces. But we have the Sun and Venus in your fifth house of love, romance, pleasure, and happiness. So this is something really beautiful going on. But with Venus opposing Pluto, as I say, that energy of friendships that are controlling or negatively impacting your happiness or your relationship life or your love life or something like this might be out the door at this time. You might also be finding that you are healing some past fears surrounding friendships or feeling connected in friendships due to bad experience. Uh, so what I have for you, Pisces, with this full moon is really this sense of wish fulfillment in terms of doing something for yourself, being seen socially. Uh, it's a beautiful time to socialize. It's a beautiful time to take a trip with a partner. Um, it's a beautiful time to find romance or be in a romantic relationship, actually, because we had the woman holding a heart. Now, this is very beautiful for your romantic life. Uh, it's going to be feeling very joyous, very romantic. You could be receiving romantic gifts from a partner. With the Justice card, some of you could actually be finally receiving a love that you deserve. Some of you could also be receiving an offer of significant commitment with a partner. And this could have been something that is long-term coming with the Temperance card. Some of you could be finding yourself in a relationship now that feels very healing, feels very peaceful, feels very conducive to your well-being, someone who's quite calm, somebody who's quite even. Um, some of you could also be receiving an apology from a Sagittarius or a Libra, but that's only for a select few of you. There could be healing going on with for you with the Sagittarius or a Libra, or these could be signs um, very significant in the chart of whoever you're dealing with. But with the Temperance card and the Justice card, there's a sense of equilibrium and balance coming out of this in terms of your social needs, your romantic needs, your friendship, your sense of belonging, uh, who you choose to associate with, your soul tribe. There could be a lot of karmic healing going on there as well. So it could be that you are finding at this time, Pisces, that everything is sort of balancing out as it should be. And you can sort of explore now who you are. Maybe things are balancing in your professional life. Maybe things are balancing out in your friendship life, in your romantic life. 
but it's very likely as well with this full moon being in your 11th house you could have some kind of public persona or come into some sort of fame at this time and this is something that <laughs> with this one holding a, a heart card could make you feel really emotionally fulfilled you could feel really loved and supported at this time as you should do with venus um, being in your fifth house. It's a beautiful time for love. It's also for some of you I have to say because Jupiter is in your sign opposing your seventh house Some of you could be getting married or engaged with that justice card and the woman holding a heart and with the temperance card This could be something that's very um, Balanced or also near the water or with a lot of fire. So some of you could be getting a romantic proposal of some kind or meeting somebody near the ocean or there could be a lot of candles or something like that for you. But fire and water energies are going to make you feel more balanced and at home at this time as well. But I'll see if I have anything else written for you. No. It's a pretty nice one, I have to say, Pisces. I do think the 11th house is uh, of wish fulfillment. So for some of you, you could be wishing for a contract or an apology or a romantic uh, situation to transpire or to bloom. So that is something that's coming up for you. I hope you have a really beautiful full moon, Pisces, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.